So new prop foam 15, we have introduced a new prop foam formula, prop foam 15, which is one that a lot of you have been asking about a denser prop foam than say like our 10 pound foam or some of the others that we have that are, are fairly dense, but uh, for some hand props, especially weapons and things like that, sometimes even the 10 pound foam is not quite enough. So we've introduced the new Prop Foam 15. And what that means is anytime you see that number at the end, that is the density per cubic foot. So that is the measurement by which foams are measured. So uh, if you see something that's a four pound foam like Prop Foam 4, that four means that it's four liquid pounds of foam will expand to fill a cubic foot. So in the case of Prop Foam 15, Prop Foam 15, of course, this is uh, much like the others in that series. This is a, a 100 to 40 mix ratio, and I apologize for the state of my containers. It's, I've already been using these a lot this morning, but uh, Prop Foam 15, of course, that means 15 liquid pounds of foam is going to fill a cubic foot. So a relatively low expansion rate, but what that means is you get a much better skin surface on that finished part. And that's, of course, really important when you're casting weapon props, little hand props and things like that. And that eliminates a stage that's sometimes necessary for some things where you ha might have to brush or slosh a skin of rubber around. Now, it's still foam and it still expands and can still trap air bubbles on the surface, but uh, that higher fidelity skin is really helpful, again, in weapon prop casting. So we're going to cast just a simple part today, just go through the steps of using the Prop Foam 15. And again, this is a great uh, material for you if you're casting weapon props or uh, if you're casting padding applications. This is very, probably the best way to explain this is in your, uh, in your automobile, you probably have an armrest that you put your elbow on. That's probably somewhere around a 10 to 15 range. That really dense padding application, um, that's where you typically see those that higher density flexible foams. So let's get started. So Prop Foam 15 mixes with the same ratio as Prop Foam 10. This is mixed uh, 100 parts B to 40 parts A. And real important with that, that is a weight ratio, hence our gram scale right here. So remember, anytime you're working with something like a flexible foam formula that has a weight ratio like that, there's no, there's no way to use that same ratio in volume just because the, the, that's based off the density of these two components. So real important there, if you're working with flexible foams on a regular basis, a gram scale is an excellent investment. And uh, this, this is one of our just cheap shop scales that we use around here, and most of these can be purchased from a, an office supply store now for around 30 bucks or so, So, and it's well worth the investment. This one is accurate to a gram, but that's another little, one of those minor things I'd like to point out that uh, a lot of times when I run into people that are having issues with... Uh, consistent batches when they're working really small, it turns out they're working in ounces rather than grams. And whether or not you think it's a communist conspiracy, I highly recommend you switch to uh, metric when you're weighing out materials like this because it will be a thousand times more accurate than trying to do that with ounces. So anyway, off my soapbox, time to mix up some foam. Now, even though we can pigment this with polycolor pigments and the 6800 pigments, I'm just gonna do a basic foam cast with no additives just so you can see how this works. Now, another important detail about working with flexible foams is the temperature of your work environment. If you're doing a lot of foam work, it's especially flexible foams. They really prefer warm environments. Uh, even a little bit of humidity is not so bad, but uh, uh, humidity can be bad for the part A as far as storage goes, but uh, a warm environment is ideal for casting flexible foams. Uh, when you're casting in cool weather, you'll find that you don't get as nice of a skin. So a warm mold and a warm work environment gets the best results. So we have our 100 parts of the B and we're gonna add 40 parts of A. So the whole point of the Prop Foam 15 is for its low expansion rate. I would not recommend this 
for uh, filling out latex masks and that sort of thing. What you're paying for with this one is that the skinning properties, which makes it ideal for uh, weapon props and anything that requires a really tough skin surface, especially durable weapon props like firearms or uh, prop wrenches or you know anything that's going to be interacted with a lot. And again, because it has that lower expansion rate, gives you a little bit more time to get that spread out in a mold. So we're just going to use one of our basic little test molds of a leaf. This is a silicone mold with a BR75D shell. And this is ideal for thinner parts like this when you're uh, working with the lower density foams, especially like the Prop Foam 4 or the TC266. Some of those are ideal for filling out large areas. Uh, this foam is, works very well for thin sections, hence are using it for this uh, leaf mold. Now our working time is pretty fast. Any of these flexible foams, remember the way flexible foam works is that chemistry is using a, a small amount of water in that part B to interact with that part A and then that exotherm is what's creating that foam action. So we wanna move quick on that and get that immediately stirred up. You'll see it start to what they call that cream time where it starts to expand a little bit. That's where you wanna immediately get that into the mold and spread out. And if you're working with a mold with a, a little different geometry with a, uh, a closed top, that will also help compress that to a higher density and get you a, a, a nicer skin on the surface. Anytime you're doing a part like this in free rise, um, you're not going to get as high of a density as something that's a little bit more compacted. So that's one of the, again, one of the tricky things with flexible foams is they're going to change slightly depending on the geometry of the mold. When you have any kind of mold that comes to a bottleneck is obviously going to com compress that foam more. Now our working time, again, is pretty fast. We only have a, about a minute or so to really get that mixed and poured. Then we have a little extra time with this one to slosh it around. Um, but then our demold time is going to be the same as any of the foams, about 30 minutes or so. So we want to make sure we give that plenty of time to set up and then we'll be ready to demold. Okay, it's about 25, 30 minutes later or so and we are ready to demold our part. And you can see we have a really nice tough skin on the surface and at this point if we want to paint this part it's going to stiffen up a little bit as it uh, continues to cure but uh, if we want to paint this part we can use our flex paint I'll put a link to that tutorial at the end of this video but uh, the flex paint is a great way to paint a flexible foam or flexible urethane surface like this it's a one part uh, flexible urethane that you can pigment with Liquitex acrylics or with the polycolor pigments. Now, the again, the main use of this type of foam is, of course, in the industrial world, we have people using this for padding applications and things like that. But for those of you in the prop world, this is an excellent way to make hand props, weapon props, that sort of thing. Anything that needs to be a little bit more durable than, say, a lower density foam. And most importantly, having that really tough integral skin on the foam. So that, that's real important to having those props come right out of the mold, ready to go. So um, we've used this in our, uh, our old 7325 prop wrench mold and it worked great. This can be used in conjunction with the uh, powder pigments we have, our blue steel powder pigment. It works great for getting metallic effects as well as of course the polycolor pigments can be used to internally pigment this to, uh, to a variety of colors. So there you have the Prop Foam 15 and its basic applications to the world of prop making and padding applications. And of course, this is a part of our complete line of flexible foams. We have a, a full range of foams. You can, I'll put a link to the foam product section in the video description, so be sure to check that out. As well as, I'll put a link to our video library. We have a lot of resources on both foam casting, resin casting, all kinds of topics. 
So that's a great place to learn about a lot of processes and it's a lot more organized than the kind of scattershot approach of trying to find something on the YouTubes. So be sure to check out the links in the video description. All of the products we use, of course, are available on our website at brickintheyard.com. So be sure to check those out. And of course, if you haven't already, be sure to uh, like the video and subscribe if you haven't already and click the bell icon so you get notified when there's new content. And one last little bit of housekeeping. Uh, we have revamped our newsletter service and we kind of let that slide a little bit during COVID because there's shortages and all. Uh, we're creating insane uh, traffic jams of products. So we really kind of backed off our marketing to, uh, to make sure we weren't running out of products for our, our main customers. So now that that is finally lifting, we're kind of back to the, the world of traditional marketing and that sort of thing. So uh, with that in mind, we have a sign up now readily available on our homepage. You can sign up right there, go to brickintheyard.com and right there on the homepage, you'll see a sign up deal for our newsletter. So be sure to sign up on that because we have a lot of new products coming out soon and that's a great way to stay informed on all of the new products and events and things happening in the Biddy Mold Supply universe. So thanks for watching.